Okay, chat, can you hear me? We, we all, we're, we're here. Hello, welcome everybody. Looks like my mic is working. Um, sorry about that, everybody. We had uh, some technical difficulties for whatever reason. My computer decided that, uh, that audio I did not want to hear this episode of nerdy gritty yeah yeah that that having audio at all was was a bad idea uh <laughs> and it was uh the kind of rough um also you can see fox is on his phone he's been having computer issues uh yeah not that big of a deal but uh i do say that so that you guys know that's why his uh his visual on his screen is going to be that the kind of the, the the phone looking thing anyway hey good morning y'all how y'all doing fox you said you had an extra route today uh did it have to do with snow is that is that part of the problem no just just lack of lack of lack of bus drivers lack of oh, it's actually right. become it's actually become a weird day if i don't have to cover an extra if you don't route, have to cover so. oh man right you guys are that short hey if uh any of you listeners are uh are what's the word i'm looking for living in oregon that was the word i was looking for a phrase I was if looking you're for. masochistic if you're masochistic and have a cdl then drive a bus then drive a bus that's right <laughs> um okay hey uh, we're running a little bit late already so and then fox needs to leave early also so we're probably going to jump into the podcast uh no you don't have to leave early anymore not early just by 11 10 which is an hour and 40 minutes from now <laughs> It is. Is it an hour and four? I guess it's an hour and a half, but yeah. Not, I guess. Not, yeah. If our podcast lasts that long, then I'm going to leave early either way. <laughs> I don't want to hear myself talk that much. Oh, today, by the way, I am drinking uh, my cardamom tea again, but in a new mug my wife got me. Uh, here, Fox, I'll show you. You're on a different camera here. Uncle Iroh's Delectable Tea or Deadly Poison. And that's, I'll show you, chat. There you go. Uncle Iroh's nice. delectable tea or deadly poison. Uncle Iroh is my spirit animal. I want to be exactly like him every day of my life. And uh, I'm looking forward to the Netflix live action. Uh, yes, I am also most, mostly I because just, they have cast made. I think a perfect cast for uh, for Uncle Iroh. Oh, who is it? I don't know. Dang. He's, I forget his name, but he's he's Appa in a. He's the the dad in um Kim's Convenience. So another Netflix show. Well, it's a Canadian show that's on Netflix, and it's very funny. And he's is he's gonna work out. You should watch that show. It's funny. But I should. He's uh, gonna he's gonna he's gonna be real good in it. Chat. I'm real sorry that I made myself blurry here by showing you that mug. Hang on. Let me see if I can refocus the camera here. Do the. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Come on. Although your face being blurry. Really I know, it's probably not, not that big of a deal. I need a new camera. Yeah, nobody's really like, oh, is. no, less definition on Steve's face. I <laughs> know, it needs to be beautiful and perfect and gorgeous. Okay, uh, I, again, restarted my computer, so let me reopen all my stuff here. Uh, Ugh, so, so unprofessional. I'm so sorry. I opened my, com or I started like, okay, so last night we were playing Grounded, as we do every Tuesday, and everything was working both peachy and keen. Things were going really well uh agreed and uh then today i sit down at my computer and i'm like oh i'll need background music because there is no video game background music in here so i just tried to just play like my i have a a royalty free music app that i started to play and it wasn't working at all and i was like huh that's weird it's just not i don't hear uh, anything it's not making any sound at all that's really weird okay well whatever that's fine so I was like, I'll just uh, look up uh, royalty free music on YouTube. And that's what I'll do. I will, uh, you know, do that. And so I went and then YouTube was like, oh, your audio codec is broken. You need to restart your computer. And I was like, what is that? Is that a thing? No, it must be YouTube. It's not. It's not me. It's the children who are wrong. Like it's, it's the it's the computer who is wrong. Yeah, it's not me. It's it's the computer. And so I, uh, I then uh, tried to use Amazon Music, like the app, 
and it wasn't playing either. Like, cause this was like, you know what? Forget the royalty free part. I'm just going to try and play something and see what happens. And nothing was happening. And I'm like, Oh dang it. I'm like, fine. No music at all. I don't even care. Fine. Have it your way. And, uh, then I started the stream and I tried talking and then the chat was like, Hey, we can't hear you. We can't hear you at all. We got nothing. And I was like, crap. So it turns out it was you. It was the computer and I had to do a restart. That's, well, that's true. Yeah. You're just refusing to accept it. Right, right. So, yeah, unfortunately, uh, means we're starting a little bit late today. Fortunately. What, what, a, hero, what a harrowing tale. I know. And and I survived. I made it. It was, uh, it was touch and go it there for a, a bit, baby. but I lived. I lived. Anyway, Fox, how are you today, my friend? What have you been up to? What's going on with you? I hate doing okay in my camera. Uh, get to teach a lesson on Nehemiah five tonight. Ooh, fun times at our Wednesday night Bible study. Yeah, usually, you know, I, I, I teach the more academic, intellectual side of things, church wise. Uh, you know, talking about apologetics and whatnot, but tonight. I'm going to be teaching the Bible study, which I'm really excited for. That's awesome. Especially because Nehemiah, Nehemiah 5 is is really like unique even in the book of Nehemiah. It kind of takes a break from the narrative about building a wall and kind of addresses, like, it gets to the idea of like systematic justice and, and addressing the needs of the people. And it's, uh, it's it, I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. There was a lot of irony for, of the people who were referencing Nehemiah for building a wall on our southern mm -hmm. border. Like mm -hmm. a lot of severe, severe irony. Yeah, right no, no, no. Uh, yeah, it was very, very much a self, a self separation of people who actually understand, who take a, take time to understand scripture. Right, exactly that. Yeah, and people who just say, "Oh, look, they're building a wall. That must mean it supports my narrative." They're, about they're building, building a wall, wall to protect them from invaders. Well, they were building a wall yeah. to protect people from dangerous situations. Like it's, hmm. Right. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yeah. Obviously, it's a one for one situation. This right. event that happened thousands of years ago in a completely <laughs> different culture thousands of miles away must be exactly the same identical. as mine right now identical <laughs> um that's I, how you should read scripture uh i am preaching this sunday on uh uh so we've been doing a uh, a series called family portraits and we're just been talking about family in general yeah and uh i'm really curious about that actually i uh have had the i uh, have the pleasure of closing it out this weekend and uh it's partially going to be about uh different cultures within a family so just talking about my situation with my wife and how i am mexican and she is yeah. white. uh that's yeah. going to be like a, bl a blended family so to speak so to speak yeah blended family usually means like divorced families and kids whatnot but yeah i, I understand that but in a way but uh river yeah. welcome back welcome back we got everything figured out huzzah <laughs> but um so, but yeah, I'm preaching this weekend a little bit about, uh, families coming together and like becoming a family, uh, but also mostly going to be talking about, uh, cross-cultural churches and like being, what well, making the church family one that is intercultural and, you know, being loving and accepting of people who have different cultures than you, even if it's something that you may not be used to, you know, it, it's so funny, um, doing my other podcast, the Pocha podcast, which, by the way, you guys can uh, check out online if you're interested in learning about Mexican culture. Uh, the Pocho Podcast, I've learned this word syncretism, which is a fancy yes. word that just means when two cultures come together to create a, a, like a, something entirely new. And how in a bunch of different uh, communities, particularly in Mexican culture very much so, there was this syncretism with Catholicism and then their traditional... Um, their traditional like uh, tribal religion and whatnot. And we see yeah. things like that and we're like, Oh, it's so weird that they mixed their former culture with their Christian culture and came up with something that is something in the middle. We certainly now, don't anyway, do that let, here in let America go, though. <laughs> let me go get my Christmas tree. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Jesus did. <laughs> So, you know, in, you know Jerusalem, where there's all those those uh, pine trees. Exactly, exactly that. So yeah, uh, we'll be talking about that as well as about uh, just you know how how 
when we see somebody that has such a different culture than us, as long as it's not outright sinful, we just got to love them and accept them. And if it is outright sinful, we should lovingly say, hey, man, how can I help you <laughs> walk away from that sin? What, what can I do for you? So, yeah, it's going to be an sure. interesting conversation. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm looking forward to it. Good. I usually reserve, because I don't work there anymore, I usually reserve my sermons for the things where I like to step up there and, and shake up, uh, shake yeah, Shaking you get to be bit. more controversial. Yeah, exactly that. I get to go and be more controversial, which I love. I love it. Oh, man. Okay, we're going to get started here with our podcast in just a second, chat. Um, uh, first of all, welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, Battlestate Games and how they uh, have decided that the way they're going to deal with cheaters is by taking their cheaters' screen names putting them on this huge list and then just openly sharing that list with people. And we're going to be having a conversation on whether we think that's okay or not. If it's um, maybe it's not enough at all. Like how exactly, yeah. how do we feel about this, uh, about I don't know, low, low key doxing, I guess we could call it in a way. But, I, yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that. So, uh, but uh, before that, we're going to be chatting about the UN and uh, some some other news going on in the world today. Uh, before we get into this fully, though, we want you guys to know that uh, we will be podcasting. And so this is something that people will hopefully listen to later. So we will not be interacting with the chat during the podcast. Uh, so but that doesn't mean that you should not put things in the chat or, uh, or having conversations like putting your thoughts in there, because once the podcast is over, we are going to go back and check out your questions and respond to the things you said and kind of, uh, continuing that dialogue with you guys. So, you know, our 15 ish podcast, but then afterward, we will be chatting with you guys a little bit, wanting to know your thoughts on things and, uh, kind of your responses. So go ahead and just put whatever comments, responses, as if we were going to respond to it toss all that, that all into chat uh while we're watching here uh with that being said fox are you ready to record a podcast i believe i am my friend all right i am recording yes and bn one two three four one three two, four today on the nerdy gritty has Battlestate Games gone too far in handling their cheaters? Hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to the Nerdy Gritty, where we, get this, delve deep into the details of pop oh. culture. I, yeah, I am uh, definitely uh, uh, not cheating with my perfect aim, uh, Fox. Uh, and I am a uh, rage quitting Des that will find you and search out who you are and, uh, and come to your door one day and ask you why you have to cheat. But really, I just want to have a conversation. Like, just be like yeah, hey, that's it. Like, what, what's Look, going I'm upset. On? <laughs> but I believe in face-to-face -face connection. Right, right, right. I didn't, I didn't want to just scream at you online. I want to make sure that we had this talk. You know, right. We're both human beings. I respect who you are. I disagree with your actions, you know. Right. Absolutely. Hey, um, Fox, you know what's cool? Yes. When countries uh, come together. Uh, oh, what, what is what is cool? No, no answer ice, the question. Go ahead. Ice cold. Ice cold. <laughs> no, that's cooler than being cool. You do. That's cooler than being cool. I know. <laughs> uh, when countries come together to try and solve a problem together, you know, when we forget about borders and we just mm -hmm. set, mm -hmm. set our, our differences aside and we try and solve things together, kind of like the United right. Nations. Uh, Necessary. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, uh, in fact, the United Nations is about to host its first ever video games events. I'm reading an IGN article here uh, because what they're really going to be talking about is sustainability in video games. The, the oh, cool. technology we use and the, the things that we do. Yeah, absolutely. And so video games is the biggest money-making market on the planet. It's absolutely massive. Yeah. There are 3.2 right. billion with a B. Nearly half the world is a gamer. So uh, they, they need to be talking about this stuff. And that's wonderful. We love, we love that they're talking about this stuff. But that, that got me thinking. What else in gaming does the UN need to address? You know, what, what other things... 
does the does the United Nations need to get together to help make sure that that we're addressing together as a community? Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. So uh, fuck no, no, this is a good conversation. Nobody's had this. It's it's crazy that we haven't had this conversation. Because <laughs> I have one right off Where, the bat. You, I have one for sure. Well, so do I. Something comes to mind right off the bat. And here's what I think the UN needs to do. Uh, needs to declare teabagging a war crime. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> If that were to happen in real life, you know, you know, that guy is going b- before a tribunal. They are, man, that is, that's not okay. Even, that's desecration of a dead body. Like, that's ridiculous. So the UN needs to step in and make this, just make this declaration to the world. It's XX your mom two four one O X X and and somebody busts in the door and he's <laughs> get on the ground get on the ground now they got they got their Robin's blue egg uniform yeah. there <laughs> oh man that's yeah that's absolutely vital that we address that yeah. United Nations needs to find a way see here's what I'm thinking of ready day one patches. There's got to be a way uh, that that the, the world can come together and figure out how about we release the game not broken. Like that that's the one that really I feel like we should be able to come together as a world right. and just say make it not broken when you when you release it. I, well, I here's here's the thing. I mean, I mean to be honest, a patch isn't necessarily something that's broken. Might be just adding something, maybe they had to they had to Go gold. At, they had a certain point where they had to, and they had to add something. Just release it the next day, and make it a day negative one patch, where the patch just gets added to the game before. It, I mean, it's really just because there's there's physical discs still. Right, right. Because you can just I just put the patch in before it's able to be installed, guys. I know I don't know about. <laughs> coding or whatever there, there are devs that are listening to this and what? screen it's, it doesn't work that way yeah. i'll kill you <laughs> i apologize to you guys out there this is a co- comedy segment of our of our podcast <laughs> just do it before we can install it and let me play the game faster yeah it's that easy Gosh. why aren't you doing it yeah what are you guys even doing out there? ridiculous come on yeah, you're just like sitting around playing video games and eating chips, like getting paid for. No- I do that every day. I don't get paid for it. I mean, you kind of do because you're a school bus driver, so you are getting paid over the summer when you're not working. Well, I, I, I mean, uh, now I'll be working in the sense I'll be I'll be working as a uh, as a father. But yes, you're right. That's true. Fair point. I was getting paid over the summer despite not actually doing the job. Because of the summer break, so right, good right. point. So really, you're I the same as the devs. You and devs are the resume. same. Fox, what else does we the United the Nations need to come together to stop or to help in the world of gaming? I mean, we can also get kind of serious here. Uh-oh. I mean, it's a no, we segment, cannot. Not in this segment. We cannot. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, the UN needs to have some kind of look. Here's a real world example, I guess. There was a feature in, I believe, in one of the Metal Gear Metal Gear Solid multiplayer games. Might have been five. I don't know. One of the Metal Gear Solid multiplayer things. There was a cutscene in the game. Basically, you, factions could have. What nuclear you're saying is that missile. the UN needs to come together to stop Hideo Kojima. <laughs> To stop to him, just say, it. hey, you stop it. To roll up a newspaper and say, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, look, we your games. They're fun, but also stop it. <laughs> uh, but also keep making them? I don't know where we stand yeah. <laughs> here. There's some confusion. We're just gonna we're just gonna play safe. No no no. There was a there was a cutscene in one of the multiplayer segments of one of the Metal Gear games where factions could have uh, nuclear weapons, like as part of their, and there was a cutscene installed for or in the game that would air that would show to all players when every faction completely disarmed for n- complete nuclear disarmament, then it would show. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's to my knowledge has still not actually happened in a legitimate way. I think it's shown, but it was an accident or it wasn't right or a glitch or something. And look. 
nuclear plur- proliferation is bad in real life also sure i guess whatever <laughs> but in video games that's that's real that's life real, like, yeah. that's where we need that's Genuine where kids are struggling. learning how about nuclear weapons. Right, that's where my kids are growing up in video games right now because right. I don't want to parent them personally, so I just send them to screen. There's nothing, well, there's nothing you can do about it. Right. So, oh, I mean, yeah. obviously, no, of they, not. they have to be in the games, so we need games to teach them about nuclear disarmament. Right, otherwise, what if and my kids they, grow up wanting to have many nuclear weapons, enough nuclear weapons each to destroy the planet? That's where I am. That's who I am, and I wish I wasn't that way, but... Right, absolutely. Oh, how can I change I have they 13 made a game in yet. the room behind me. It's a big room. I played the game. I played the game Nuclear Throne, and I just assumed that it meant you should own nuclear weapons and sit on the throne. Remember when we so played a game called Preemptive Strike, and you were a helicopter just like attacking tanks and whatnot, and like it seemed like a basic war game, but then we it, it occurred to us that the game was called Preemptive Strike, and that we were the we were the <laughs> instigators of this violence. <laughs> Okay, I got yeah. my I got my last one. Me. It's a good thing. I got my last one right here. All Truly, right. the world needs to come together. United Nations needs to come yes. together to filter what video games become movies or TV shows and what don't. And to like take a look at the script yes. and say, "Hey, not guys, no, not this one." Hey, this is bad. I mean, just just take hey. Ugly Sonic, for example, right? Like, that should have gone to the <laughs> UN first. And the UN should have been the ones to say, are you kidding me? He has teeth. Hey. Why does he have human there's, teeth? There's all... Sonic, you're not creating a new character. Sonic already exists. He's right he looks there. Like this. Just look at him. Just do this again. <laughs> just do that one. It saves you time and effort. <laughs> rather than having to do... Why did you do this? Yep. Yes, I know. I think that's a good idea. I mean, yeah, they can now hire, you know, oh, you can make a lot of people angry and hire, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, director of The Last of Us uh, and writer of the show. Druckman. But you can hire him because clearly he realizes, hey, this was good. I'm just going to do, we're just going to do <laughs> this again. do for this the show. again. That's... <laughs> hey, that dialogue was really well written. We'll just have them say that again. And it will be really good still. Man, I wish I could be a celebrated director by going, you see that? Do that. Do exactly <laughs> yeah, just that. just do that one again. Just do, do that. Exa- no, yeah, stop. I hey, it. I see what you're doing, and it's not that. Stop right now. <laughs> Wrong. Bad. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, 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 Monster Hunter is very popular. So why did you do the opposite of that? <laughs> What was the thought? Because I want to see, like, inside the actor's studio with, like, Paul W.S. Anderson. <laughs> and you know, just be like, so what was your thinking about doing the opposite of what made these popular things popular? How to take us behind the so process here? I, I have something here, and he pulls up a curtain, and he's like, it's every Monster Hunter game ever made. Can you tell me where there are American soldiers in these? Yeah, can you tell me about how the American you, military factors into this? Can you show Which, me? I, I must not... Do you have like a like a secret like old Japanese only release that I haven't seen yet? Or <laughs> oh, look, also, I know she's I know she's your wife, right? So no disrespect, <laughs> but there are other actresses. Yeah, but you can say that to Tim Burton about Helena Bonham uh, Carter, well, and yeah, that's not Helena true. Carter. Helena Bonham Carter is a blessing to everything that she appears she's, in. She's so. she's very uh, a good actress. So there's the difference. <laughs> The UN has a lot of work to do. They really do. They have a lot of work to do. Hey, what else is going on in the world of news, Fox? In the world of news, hey, okay. So the the ongoing saga of, like, pop culture things, video games, you know, trading cards, things like that, becoming extremely valuable and like selling, like auctioning off for ridiculous prices. We've got we've got a new a new installment in the world of Pokemon card auctions oh no so let's let yeah no let me give you some uh is this let me give you some background this jake paul what? or logan paul whoever whatever paul it was wearing charizard around hey, his well, neck we're gonna bring that up but this is part <laughs> of the okay so let me let me give you some background just for some context here so pokemon cards you know old pokemon cards especially like the original sets you know all those cards that i bought way back when my parents bought for me and are now worth thousands and thousands of dollars and i just like threw them in a trash can or something because yeah. i was a stupid child um 
Yeah, those are super popular right now. And there is one, one of the most valuable cards uh, is called Illustrator Pikachu. I believe it's a Japanese only, yeah, Japanese promo card. Um, it's considered, uh, I'm reading from a, a, a Kotaku article here. It's one of the rarest and probably most valuable Pokemon trading card. Uh, only a couple dozen are known to exist. One of them sold uh, at auction in 2019 for $224,500. A single Pokemon card for $224,000. Uh, another, yes, yes. Two years later on eBay, another one sold for $375,000. Now, what, is yeah, that, that Logan same Illustrator Paul, Pikachu one? Same Illustrator, yeah, we're just talking about that specific card. Jeez. Uh, Logan Paul, as you mentioned before, famous person, we'll just say, <laughs> known for lots of things. He, well, he's, he's certainly famous, possibly infamous. Uh, Logan Paul, he claims to have spent $5 million to acquire one, which sounds like he got ripped off based on those previous prices, yes. but hey, he's clearly... He's got more money than cents, uh, is what my dad would have said. Yeah. Uh, so he bought it, and then he wore it to WrestleMania uh, to kind of just show off, and I would assume try to, like, raise the value of it right. specifically to, This isn't you know, just a thing. This is thing that famous person wore. I, I wore it. I, I literally had a student, on one, an elementary student on one of my buses show me that he had a specific, like, energy drink. And I was like, cool. Like, is it, what's there? What's, what do you like about it? And he specifically said it was like Jake Paul or Logan Paul, like sponsored. Right. He's like, oh, and I didn't say anything because this kid's in like second grade. Obviously not going <laughs> to have a, that conversation with him. Anyway, so he wore it to WrestleMania in a big stupid necklace in like a little protective case. It was very funny. Um, well, uh, let's see. That would be the, the scene see, in the movie uh, where he gets shot and falls over and the camera pans away and like other things happen, but then the camera pans back to him when he stands up and the bullet has stopped on the case. <laughs> right? Stopped it from, <laughs> he's able to take out the bad guy because he thought he was dead. Right, exactly uh, that. Yeah, that's, that'd be, that's a great moment. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Apparently the limit was uh, in an era when collectors markets, uh, all types of vintage, blah, blah, blah. So that's what that says in the article. Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, blah blah blah. They're not good. This is a badly written. Article. <laughs> uh, so an another Illustrator Pikachu was being put up on eBay. Uh, apparently, the limit was four hundred and eighty thousand in a public auction. For whatever reason, I'm, I don't, we don't need to go into all those details. So that's how much that a person, person who owns, oh, had this card, uh, put it. Uh, he he put it on on eBay for four hundred and eighty thousand dollars eBay straight up sent out like press releases. Like this was like an event for them. Like it wasn't just other thing, obviously because they're going to get a big cut of the sales when, when you sell something on eBay, that's how they make their money largely. Uh, this was a, an eBay. Uh, this was, this was a, he was able to put it up for 80,000. Now the auction finished. It started February 24th and it went through March 6th. I want you to guess how much it went for. Remember the starting starting price, four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. I I I want it to be four hundred and eighty one thousand dollars, but <laughs> but I'm gonna guess a million dollars. You're about a million dollars off, actually. Which direction? Please be down. <laughs> Please tell me it didn't sell at all. Zero bits. Yes. <laughs> Zero, zero bits. Now, of course, <laughs> they're going to try to sell it again, whatever, but of nobody course. decided, nobody bid on this Illustrator Pikachu card, uh, which, yes, I agree, is just wonderful news. Wonderful news. Absolutely. Because, hey, that's too much money to spend on a single Pokemon card. What are you going to do you won't even that? actually... You want it, it's a, it's a, it's a status purchase. You might as well be Logan Paul, where you're but just gonna wear it. Status somewhere. Status purchase to who? Who are you gonna bring into your home and say? And this is my Illustrator Pikachu. <laughs> yeah. Who are you gonna bring into your home and sell that? And and then furthermore, who is gonna not just turn around and walk out of your home? <laughs> and after leave. You're... Immediately leave. Oh, I know we've known each other for twelve years, but <laughs> this mm, goodbye. Nope. It was nice knowing you. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, for and nobody decided to bid on it. It's wonderful. Clearly an example of things are actually only as valuable as people are willing to 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 pay for them. Well, 480,000 is a speculative value and actually me is meaningless when nobody if actually it's bids zero, anything. Yeah, it's zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's actually worth in in practical dollars nothing. So, I really hope this just continues. It's just just the worst. Just the worst. On that note, did you hear what it's happened just, yeah. on January 27th of this year? It was my friend Sydney's birthday. An autographed Black Lotus sold for $511,000. Autographed by what? The artist? That's my guess. All I'm seeing here in this is I, I, just, just the person I Googled it real quick. And so uh, it, it, I knew that it had happened. I didn't know the exact price. So I Googled it for the price. It just says autographed. So. <laughs> yeah, so literally anybody. <laughs> it's, by, my, uh, it's my autograph. <laughs> this is autographed by Will Ferrell. It has nothing to do with him, but hey. That's yes, by the artist Christopher Rush. Okay. Yep. Cool name. Uh, well, that's a lot of money. That is a lot. Of, speaking of a lot okay. of money, hey, yeah. Do you have any Funkos? Funko I have, Pops. I have. I think just one. I think we have a Baby Groot somewhere. A Baby Groot. I nice, have another, nice. I think we just have Baby Groot. I think, or I might have another one somewhere else, but I can't remember. Uh, I have. Uh, I think two. I have uh, like Batman ones over here. If my I don't, my camera's still yeah. blurry, it won't it won't refocus. But I have like a Scarecrow, Batman, and a Robin, and that's it. Yeah. Um. That's cool, and I know Funkos are are like they, they get chased and they can be worth value and what, whatnot. Uh, but Funko is sending thirty million dollars of pop figures to a landfill. A landfill. Because get this, at the end of twenty twenty, the end of twenty twenty two, they had two hundred and forty six million dollars worth of Funko Pop, you know, figures in warehouses. They had so many that they were having to buy shipping containers to store them in, on top of all of the warehouses that they own. And so now they're at this point where they're like it costs us more money to store them than to just write it off on our taxes, destroy them and send them to a landfill. And so two or sorry, $30 million of Funko pops are going to the garbage right now. A landfill in Arizona is specifically what it says here. Oh, great. Here's it's and, called the grand Canyon. And, and this is called, <laughs> Just going to fill the Grand Canyon with your, your stupid Funko Pops. Uh, I, I want to know how much product they are making. Because I work at a local game store, and we get a lot of Funko in. And we'll get in, like, Harry Potter Funko, and then on the side it'll say 457. And I'll be like, wait, yeah. are there 457 different harry potter funko out there like specifically <laughs> harry potter ones i would imagine that's part of like the certain set or series or you know season or whatever right right but i have no idea and that's my guess too is that it's specific season or series and it's wild to me that in just that series they would make 500 products it's the exact yeah. i think we're at a point right now for all of any of these collecting uh things where we're realizing what happens when you oversaturate the market Whereas the coast yeah, is dealing 100%, with that. Yeah. Funko is dealing with that right now. And it, things are only valuable if they're rare. We don't want yeah, yeah. 457 Your Harry Potter Funko. is what brings value. Yes. Yes. It's so wild to me. So, yeah, there we are. Three, uh, $30 million of Funko going into $30 the million dollars worth of Funko. That's cool. What a good legacy for, for <laughs> you know, Jonathan Funko. He's just got a lot of, you know, he just gets to be remembered for that that person who put a bunch of Funko. In a, <laughs> I, we have a friend. In fact, it's the person who we play Grounded with has uh, is related to somebody who, uh, avid collector of Funko. Hund hundreds, hundreds of Funko Pops. And look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against collecting things. I have a collector's streak. In fact, I had to basically make a conscious choice at one point to say, I'm not going to collect Funko 
<laughs> uh, because I already saw how many there were, and I was like, well, this is just not worth my time right, right. money. Um, I'm not against collecting. I'm not saying that. I just, yes, it it does seem, basically Funko seems like the new Beanie Baby. Well, and, where and I was going to say that. There's just so many, and I, oh, there's far more than Beanie Baby has, but they also okay. just seem mass produced over, like, plastic, cheap nothing. Well, and, and you can think to yourself with some collectible things, I want all of them. And that's something that you can do like with trading card games. There are, you can go buy entire sets of trading cards, yes. uh, you know, online right. or our store even sells well, sets of, before it even comes out. Yeah. 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 Like you can just buy entire sets four of, you know, sets of sets and it just right. no big deal. That, that's what you're doing. You can, it's, it's uh, feasible and plausible to collect them all. But when it comes to something like Funko Pop, and there are hundreds in just the Harry Potter, probably hundreds more in the yeah. Disney, probably hundreds more in the Marvel, oh, yeah, Marvel you know, whatever else. And then you got to think, where am I going to put these? Like, at that point, it's no longer feasible to collect them all. And the moment that you have to start choosing what you will and will not collect, it's so much easier to say, you know, I'm only going to collect very few. Very, very few. Yeah, or, yeah, or like, I like. For you, I like Batman. There's probably a bunch of Batman ones, like a lot, but it really narrows down the scope of what you're doing here, you know? Absolutely. It still lets you collect without getting to a point where you're overwhelmed. Anyway, that's that's a whole thing that we could even we can talk about. That's true. Yeah, about yeah. Collection. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going on. What's going on in the world of news, everybody? Uh, hey, Fox, are you ready to get down to the nerdy gritty? Hold on. Hold on. Yes. Yes, I am. Let's get down to the nerdy gritty. So there is a game developer called Battlestate Games, and they have a relatively popular game called Escape from Tarkov. And Escape yes. from Tarkov is a shooter game, as you know we've seen with so many other styles of games out there and whatnot. And just like any other shooter game that is a, an online shooter game, uh, they have decided... Or the, you the, sound like cheaters. somebody's mom who does not know. It's an on, I think it's one of those like online like shoot shooter games. What are you going to call them if it's a it's a multiplayer online I FPS? Yes, sure. So you just have it. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. All it is is that there uh, are cheaters, a lot of cheaters, and they have stuff in place to catch said cheaters. Yes. Oh, yeah, pretty standard for, for, for competitive games. What they do is they collect a Google Sheet that lists their banned players, and they release it to the public. It is 6,700 names long. 6,700 cool. names long. And so, again, they catch these people. They get their usernames. I'm looking at the list of banned players right now. I mean, Blowin' Beef, <laughs> Slatinos, <laughs> Omen13, like just Adam. Like, all these screen names. Yeah, got them. Uh, so here's the question we're asking today. They are taking these people's information, calling them cheaters, and publicly, they, they it was on Twitter. They just said, hey... Yes. They, Here's here's the Google Sheets of all of the cheaters. Take a look, and you can just go on there. Now, what we want to discuss is, is this okay? Are you kind of outing somebody? Is this, like, low-key doxing in a way? Like, how do we feel about this in general? So, right off the bat, Fox, I want to ask... Uh, in fact, let's back it up a few bits here. Why is online cheating so frustrating? Like, what is it that gets people, like, that pe make, makes people want to happen? You know, what, what makes a company want to get a list of cheaters and publicize this? Why is online cheating frustrating? Well, I mean, obviously, if you are crafting a game that's built around a multiplayer aspect and want to keep that multiplayer aspect, the integrity of it, you want to keep it pure uh, so that people, when they go in, they know that they are going to actually be competing against somebody. Um, at, at, on a pure skill based you know level uh then y you're gonna do all you can to try to make that the case i mean i feel as though games where there's just a significant aspect of 
bots or clear cheating, whatever, you've kind of you, you, your your reputation is going to be lowered within the community. I mean, you might you still have people play it. I'm sure there are plenty of cheaters in right. something like Overwatch or you know Call of Duty or whatever. Um, and people still play those because they're popular games anyway. They're so fun to play to a certain point. But if you would like your your game to be known as one where, hey, this is a skill based competition, uh, you can be assured that when you are playing the game, your you know skill level is going to be. You, the only way you could lose is but is if somebody is actu- actually worse or better than you, which is not nice to have happen, but it is at least reassuring to know, okay, they deserved that. Whereas, obviously, when somebody is using an aimbot or whatever other kind of cheating mechanism, some kind of software, whatever, it just takes away the competition. It takes away kind of the whole point of, of playing the game, or one of the major points of playing the game, where what's the point of playing now? If I can't actually win, or if my my chances of winning are not entirely based on my skill level, then what? why why, why would I play that? I'll have to find something else. So really, it even goes to like the financial well-being of the company, the developer, yeah. saying, well, yeah. we would like this to be continued to uh, be supported, people to play it, people to buy loot boxes or whatever. So let us, let's, let's make sure that people are getting the experience that they should be getting rather than people just hating it and moving on to something else and us just being ruined financially because people people cheated well and cheaters have gotten really good at it these days where it's not like i have god mode and i can't take damage because that becomes super obvious there are things like you mentioned aimbot and that is if you guys don't know that's if you were close enough to the person itself there is a bot that will track other players in the game and make your aim lock onto them in a way so that you can't miss or so it makes it much uh much harder to miss or i've seen some right. that are specifically that if you get over the person's body it automatically locks onto their head so everything you do is a headshot and so you're like killing right. people significantly faster and then on top of this uh, escape from tarkov itself is a unique game in that all of your items die with you when you die so you can okay. respawn and get back into the game but everything that you've earned up to that point is on your corpse and people can and excuse me will absolutely go loot your corpse oh sure For, that's how fortnite works you know. but this is yeah. including purchased items items earned in like deep previous rounds and things like that so you could be uh. building up a lot of like this solid build exactly what you want then get shot and die and you lost, you know, 15 bucks you just spent or a ton of progression that you had made over the past month or whatever. Interesting. And on then at that point, losing is like, oh, man, that's really frustrating. It's really tough. But when you find out that you lost because of a cheater, that becomes significantly more angering to the point that in the article here yeah. that I'm reading, by the way, I'm reading a GameSpot article. Um, it says that there have been fans that have said – Hey, we don't want this game right now. Turn the game off. Stop it entirely. Yeah. Develop better anti-cheating software, and then bring it back. And that's yeah, what, that's we're what on saying. board, but not right now. <laughs> right, because for whatever reason, not as is this game in particular is one that people want to to have uh, to cheat in that much more because of how like uh, uh how how much of a struggle it is I- i've never played escape from tarkov before but it does sound like the, a really high skill high intensity yeah, like high, high, high risk high reward yeah. high stakes there you go type game so you can see very much why people would be even more frustrated with uh, right ironically, escape from ironically it feels like a double-edged sword a little bit when you when you have some kind of higher stakes like that where you're actually you know losing something possibly in real life as in addition to simply having lost the match or whatever so ironically i feel like it's it's kind of i mean it's not encouraging cheating i'm never going to say that the 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 victim here both the 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 other players who aren't cheating as well as the developers they're it's not their fault obviously they're it's right i'm not going to say that they deserve this because of it but if the stakes are higher 
then people don't want to lose. And some people are willing to say, well, then I just won't play. Some people are willing to say, well, I just will accept the loss. That's how it goes. I'll just try to be better as a player. And some people are willing to say, I still want to play, but I'm unwilling to accept the stakes. So therefore, I will find some unnatural means, un, you know, some kind of digital steroids to, uh, to uh, kind of juice the system a little bit here. Digital steroids to juice the system is a really good like phrase there, Fox. Good work. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna write that down and put it in my next like cyberpunk like uh, dystopian cyberpunk detective thriller. So then, okay, so Battlestate Games has their their tack now is to list all the 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 cheaters, put them on a, a Google Doc, and just publicly release that doc. What? How do you feel about that? What do you think about that? Oh, right off the bat, I love it. I love the just, <laughs> hey, you, you, you know, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Like this was your, this was your choice. You decided to do this and we're just, we're going to display, you know, the, here's the people who decided to do this. Okay. Bye. Like that. I mean, they're, uh, it's not like they are. I, I guess the question, uh, my question is, well, you, you're banned from the game anyway. So. It's not like it's not like you're gonna get back into Escape from Tarkov and people are gonna say, <laughs> "Oh, that's the username I saw on the list." How dare you be the bad? guy? You know, like, no, nah, you can't play anymore. I mean, you'd have to create a whole new profile or whatever and start from the beginning. So, I mean, I can't right off the bat see any reason why they shouldn't. Um, I can understand maybe the idea of doxing. We can get into that, but just just from a just you know hot take standpoint, I think it's fine. I think it's, I think it's fine. I think it's actually pretty funny. I'm on the fence. I mean, it is a little funny. Yes. <clears throat> Especially reading some of these names. Uh, some of these names should be made public <laughs> and shamed so that people do not uh, have the name Ch they're, Chili they're Nuts. Bad. Chili Nuts with a Z. Don't just stop. No. No, <laughs> that one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. <laughs> but uh, here's why I'm kind of on the fence with it because – Gamer tags, particularly for people that are, you know, it's part of their identity. Like they, they want nothing more than to be able to make this their living or this is their main hobby that they're doing for the huge part of their day. Sure. And then when they are publicly, you know, announced as a cheater in this way, they either have to change their name because... Start, start from the beginning. Yeah. Or... Again, this, this is basically internet doxing. Like, let's pretend for a second here that uh, I'm Rat Bro. I, I'm so happy that I have this, <laughs> no, this name list with, here. Let's stick with Chili Nuts. Let's <laughs> go with Chili Nuts. No, I, I'm going like to read I'm going to read and use as many of these names as possible. Uh, just Fair just enough, to yeah. contradict my <laughs> my <laughs> stance here. <laughs> Yeah, to dox them personally rather than just right, from right. <laughs> Instead of just a big list, I want Dwar sixty nine to be the one that. I... <laughs> anyway, classic. Let's pretend that Leo Tark is uh, he he's Leo Tark on uh, Escape from Tarkov, but also on Discord, but also on Xbox Live, but also on right. Twitch, and. People get really angry about these things, like dangerously angry about these things. And I understand that there is an amount of, hey, look, man, I didn't tell people to go to your Twitch page and to to give you death threats. I didn't tell you to do anything. All I did was make your mm -hmm. name public. I understand that, that they sure. can get away with that. But at the same time, we know as gamers, we know that there are people out there that take it that personally, that to them it's that yeah. important. And they will, I mean, take a look at like Felicia Day when she, uh, when gamers got mad at her during the. Uh... Is she on this list? No, yeah, that she, Felicia Day is right here. No. Felicia Day is a cheater in Escape from Tarkov. Uh, I, I read her memoir and th th there was. Yeah. A, I need to read that. A, a, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, yeah. I'll let you borrow it. But uh, there was cool. a part talking about how at one point she got doxxed and people were driving by her house and how terrifying that is. And look, man, I get that cheating sucks. Don't do a cheat. Human beings should not be you should not be afraid for your life because you cheated in a video game. And that that's to me well, where yes, this kind absolutely. of absolutely like, <laughs> where it kind of gets like to oh man, I don't know. I feel a little more uncomfortable with it. 
Yeah, and I understand that. And my, my impulse was saying was to say, well, all it is is a username. Doxing, that to me, I wouldn't even categorize like just at first glance, wouldn't categorize it as doxing. The term dox comes from its shortened form of documents, which is tip is used to to describe like personal information. Right. Your I don't know, your documents, whatever. Like, you know, your name, your address, your you know, whatever, all those kinds of things, identifying uh, information. And if somebody were to come across the fantastic mister somewhere on, you know, on PlayStation network, they wouldn't, most people would just see an, a username and move on. Or if they shot me in some game, I don't ever play. Uh, they would just say, cool, got him. And then move on. And without, without like the username doesn't really give you, unless my username is, you know, Kyle from Wood Village, Oregon. Here's with the address, fill in the blank. It's a very long username, but if, like, unless <laughs> I'm personally adding in some information there, or it's on my PlayStation profile or something like that, then just knowing the username doesn't actually reveal any of that personal information. Now, what I also have to say is, I am not somebody who's ever been interested, nor will I do I ever expect to be interested in finding somebody to get retribution on, you know, for, for, for an online action. I don't ever really hope to do that, nor am I, I mean, particularly adept at internet sleuthing, finding out actual information about people. I wouldn't know the first thing to do if I wanted to know that information about, you know, chili nuts or whoever. Uh, so what I have to recognize is there are people who know how to do that. And I would imagine that the internet being what it is, it's almost it might be nearly impossible to completely hide that kind of information. You know, it, there might be a way to, you know, oh, I found your IP address. I found these kinds of things, just the technical, which led me to know that you're at least in this area, which then I can look at wood, you know, look up Wood Village information and see, you know, oh, your name is on the church of the, the website of the church you go to because you have this role there. Okay, so I know you're probably going to be there at this time right, on right. this day. Like, just it, it doesn't need to, I have to tell myself, just because it's only a username does not mean they can't find some way. They don't need to know my IP address. They don't need to know, like, they can find, and then just extrapolate. And so I do have to recognize that even as sim the sim a simple thing as adding a username to a list could potentially be dangerous if you have somebody who is, I guess, unhinged a little bit well, or, or will, will, will willing to, to go the extra step in expressing their anger towards somebody and their, and their online behavior. And maybe it's not even just like going to your actual home. I'm looking here and something that I'm just realizing right now looking at it is I'd say 10% of these maybe 20% of these have a name and then TTV. And I'm like, what is that? And so I just Googled it real quick. And it means if you see somebody with a username that has TTV on it, that means it's twitch.tv. It means you can take oh, okay. that username, go to Twitch and watch them play. And now yeah. if they're using face cam, you know what this person looks like. You, you know what they look like. You, you can hear their voice. Like, you know, another way to contact, you can jump in their, their chats and just, absolutely blast them threaten their life whatever you need to do like again uh, at the end of the day it, it's just a username i do understand that it's not full doxing it really isn't but i wonder do these people does goblin d's <laughs> Oh man! I picked a oh, random name, and it wasn't until after I said it that I realized what it was. You didn't, you didn't realize it was the best possible one. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, uh, Hotman eighty nine. We'll do that. Hotman eighty nine. Uh, Flamio Hotman. Uh, Flamio Hotman. Yeah, that that Hotman eighty nine. It's not his real name, but it is a way that we could find these people. And at least to have some like some steps into finding these people. And I don't know. It, it's tough. It is. It is at the very least. It's an identifying factor. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's not it's not my social security number, but it is getting closer to knowing who I am. 
So, uh, so that's that's absolutely true. So okay, so let, let's let, we agree. It's it's on the fence. It's a little bit rough. We but at the same time, don't cheat. Then like don't 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 do it. Well, cheat. sure. I mean that's that's the original. Like this is kind of petty anyway. Like you shouldn't take this too ser- that, that seriously. That you're willing to make the entire experience worse for everybody to try to make it a little better for yourself. And here is yeah, but also people are cheaters going to cheat. Like people are going to do this. I, I it's almost. It's not inevitable, but I mean, to try to tell somebody after the fact you shouldn't have done that is kind of a moot point at that point. Uh, here's here uh, is what I think would just make it perfectly fine for me. Add it to uh, just uh, a straight up like disclaimer, but as as you load the game, that says if your account is found to be using any kind of cheating software, mm. you know whatever. And even put specifics, you know, uh, or at least in some kind. Then here are the consequences. Mm. Fully warned, fully yeah, yeah. displayed to the person playing. This is what will happen. A. Then they have no way to say, "Well, I didn't know." Put put it in the terms of service. Say you literally have to check a box to in order to play this game. Uh, you know that you agree to this. We under I understand that terms of service are ridiculous, and nobody actually ever reads them fully, but legally speaking they were there um, or even it's, it's not in the tos maybe yeah. it's just like one quick phrase that comes up as you boot the game up and it just says you know right. that cheaters will have their their username shared or whatever something yes. simple like that or, or yeah or yeah I still but still put a box that says you know by checking this box you agree to this put it in addition mm. to the terms of it. yeah bring bring a, like they actively have to acknowledge that it was the that it was is the case then once you do that, no sympathy. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, I'm with you actually. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a great idea. Names on blast, you know, skywriting. I'm fine with it. Put them, put them on Central in, in, in Times Square. <laughs> Points an arrow this at their house. Me. A banner with this an arrow. This person said they wanted this to happen and chose for it to do that. This oh, is man. what they wanted to happen, so we did it for them. You're welcome, uh, uh, Chili Nuts. That one's never going to leave my brain now. <laughs> Man, we, I I could have the the rest of this podcast me like finding <laughs> random the ones. Two hours. Guacamole ginger. There you go. There's a good one. <laughs> so anyway, uh, okay. So then, what about other games? Like, do we think that this should become a standard? Then should Overwatch do the same thing? Should uh, uh, Fortnite do the same thing. Like, is this a general good idea, or are there other ways to deal with this? Here's the problem: is I would assume that once this becomes more of a thing, um, well, I, yeah, really, what it comes down to, because I was going to say, well, a cheater could just create a dummy account, and if it gets banned, oh no, but now I have it's fine. But really, what this comes down to is trying to. Uh, incentivize somebody by uh, threatening their online reputation. Like, the, if, if it all it was was, you know, just this game specifically, or like people, it, it feels more like, oh no, I got banned from that game, I'll just go play something else. But instead, what they're trying to do is, oh no, I got banned from that game, and also my name is now out there. So like what is being threatened is their online popularity, their, their reputation, potentially their income. If they have a Twitch stream right. under the same name, if they're playing on Twitch, right. You know, somehow hiding this, this, uh, this, but while playing, but so, so, you know, there, there are some threats there. And to me, I, again, if you make it known, like, Hey, this is, this is what will happen if we, if we deem this to be, uh, the the case, then I'm per- I I do think it would make sense for more games to take this tack, because again, if if it's just your reputations at stake here, if if you genuinely care about playing the game, you're not going to do this anyway. But I, if you want your reputation to be upheld, then fine, why not? I think there are there are different games that you could and could not do this with. Like if you tried this, really? 
because for example uh if you try this in like league of legends let's say you're a cheater in league of legends which is like a world-renowned game they have national Massive. yeah uh, obviously yeah. things Huge. like that uh my point being people care a lot more about that and i think that it would be a more dangerous tactic for riot games to do with league of legends you know or a more yeah. dangerous tactic for blizzard to do with overwatch because these are games that people take significantly more seriously than escape from tarkov which i'm sure is a great game that people love it's, it's obviously very popular yeah no, you know, no, no, but, no, not trying to put them on blast or anything but, but it, let's just be honest they, they don't have the reach of right of, of overwatch <laughs> it's not dota you know what i mean like that's just yes, the, the reality yes. of the matter here and so i think there are some games that could not get away with this i also yeah oh go ahead no no no. i'm, I'm just trying to think like that's probably true but also wouldn't that just up the like the threat factor like no that's that's the worst type of punishment fox and you know that making the threat heavier so people won't do it is bad law like that's <laughs> that's not the way that we should do this yeah i guess that's true i mean yes i'm trying to yeah that makes sense <laughs> So uh, one thing that makes me wish that he could do, again, this is showing more of my ignorance on development than anything, is have a punishment fits the crime type of thing. So if you're caught cheating, put unbeknownst to them, if there was a way to make it so their character was 5% slower than everybody else, that <laughs> oh. every 10th bullet doesn't actually fire anywhere, you know, their, their aiming reticle is, you know, for the screen, like, half a percent off of their screen off to the side or whatever <laughs> else and just make that the punishment hey if you're gonna try and cheat with aim bots we're gonna make it real wild for you out there we're gonna make it the wild west for you and just oops your character glitched and is now stuck frozen in the middle of the map yes but you can still die stuff like that man just make it so the punishment makes the game no longer fun for you to play not that you don't want to yeah. cheat anymore, that you want to abandon this game altogether. And if you're playing publicly and you're saying things like, man, I felt like I was aiming right at this guy and it seemed like it just missed him. Man, I just feel like I'm slower than everybody else. You are yeah, at that why point. why does everybody keep putting headshots on me? <laughs> yeah, you are at that point letting the world know that you're the cheater. Like you're the one that's saying it out to the world. I don't know if that's possible, but I feel like that is more yeah. of a punishment fits the crime type, type situation there. I, I, yeah, that, I mean, it's a fun motive or a fun, like, impulse, but it does feel like something that if they're already using software that can alter the game's function in their favor, then they can also include software that might counteract. And then we're just in an arms race here. Who, right. can, who can continue to add? Which we always uh, are with cheaters. Yeah. Like, we're always in an arms race. Through, oh, race 100%. Cheaters. There's always yeah. something new that's going, you know, there are standard anti-cheat software that's just from the start added to every game and then you still have to continue like figure out the, the, the process uh let me let me let me get your get your take on this what if in addition to the clear like uh uh this is what will happen if this if we find that you are using the software using you know some kind of method to, to alter the game uh we also will threaten we will also t uh, take you to court for what? I don't know. Threatening our livelihood as a company by making by disincentivizing people to play our game. I think it would be a hollow threat, and I think people would realize. They need to talk about this at the UN. <laughs> there it is. There's the UN's Another next crime. <laughs> Another war crime. Yeah. Again, I think a punishment fitting the crime. If if man, see. Normally, I'd say that's a lot to sue somebody for X amount of dollars. But at the same time, with Escape from Tarkov specifically, this is kind of true. If your fans are saying, we want you to not have this game anymore until you create software to make this not happen. Like, we, we, want, we don't want this game anymore. We want you to take it away. Right. Then that is, yeah, that's taking away the livelihood of uh, your, your employees and your company and whatnot. And so I... I I could see for this game in particular, I could see that being an interesting, though I think still hollow threat. I don't think there's any legal pretense for them to. Sure. And, and also, you would still need to be able to identify somebody personally. 
Mm, um, mm. which then inform if it's some kind of public, you know, if you, if you can find out that information based on the, the lawsuit, then you are kind of doxing them because of it. But I don't know. I, I really, what it just comes down to, to me, whatever the consequence is going to be, there needs to be some kind of like just notification. Hey, here's what will happen. Yeah. We want, which, I think that's fair. And just, I, you, you're choosing to, you're choosing to incur this penalty. If this is, that's kind of how games work. You know, nobody's, nobody gets out there on the, on the football field. You know, nobody's at the world series, uh, you know, and tries to steal a base and then they get tagged and they're out and can, can say, what? I didn't know I could get out that way. Like, no, you do. These are the rules of the game and you need to be aware of how it works to be able to play it well, or to be able to, 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 to play. So, just let people know here. They're going to be the consequences. Yeah. Of okay. Your okay. So yeah. if you're using steroids, we will erase your name from the history books of baseball, right? Or something like that. So, so it's it's a, it's a very similar concept. Uh, final thoughts, then. Uh, I guess I, I I see and I mostly agree with exactly what you're saying. Whatever the consequences are, make them absolutely uh, clear. And then at that yeah. point, people are agreeing. The moment that they turn on the game. They are agreeing to the consequences of whatever actions they take. They know right. that when they start that cheat software and turn on the game, that there's the possibility that they will be caught, banned, and their name shared publicly. Yes, right. I agree with that. If possible, I would love more of a punishment that creates it so the cheater does not want to play the game anymore. In this case, all it makes the cheater want to do is create a different account and then continue cheating. But... I, I wish there was a way to make that person not have fun in the game anymore. So they, sure. they know no, if, that I, makes sense. if I cheat, I don't enjoy the game and therefore I should not cheat. And they can kind of have that more appropriate punishment. But again, I, I'm not uh, fluent enough, uh, intelligent enough, whatever it is, familiar, familiar enough with dev, uh, game design to know how to do that. But yeah, those are those kind of my final uh, thoughts. Yeah. In addition, one last idea when you sign up for an account on Escape from Tarkov, you have to submit a naked picture of yourself. Nope. Then mm -mm. they say nope. we will tweet. Nope. We will tweet this, this is... <laughs> if we find it. No. If we all... find out that you are cheating, we will tweet this on our public account. Zero percent. No. Okay. I, <laughs> I feel like it's the same thing. It's whatever you know. We'll blur your face. It's fine. We'll blur your face. It's just going to end up being pictures of like celebrities that they found online or whatever. Like it's the same thing. Wow. We have an attractive fan base. <laughs> Henry Cavill has created so many accounts. I don't understand why. <laughs> okay. Chat, let us know what you think about this. We'll be addressing that in just a little bit here. Uh, if you guys don't know, listening to the podcast later, by the way, we stream this every week on twitch.tv slash safe point men. Uh, we address the chat afterward and have a conversation with them. So chat, if you have any thoughts on this, put that in the, uh, put that in the chat and uh, we'll let you know we'll, we'll get to that in a bit here. But for now, Fox, what have you been up to my friend? Let's move on. What have you been up to in the, in the, uh, the world of nerdness? How, oh, Okay. Okay, well, you know what? I will talk about this. It's not really like a nerdy kind of like movie, uh, but you, your, your, uh, your stream, your, your whole the whole deal is also a church based, church related, yeah. Christian kind of thing. Um, and so I will talk about this. I, I don't think I've talked about the movie Women Talking, have I? No. Does that sound familiar? No. So uh, a few weeks ago, I had heard the title of the movie, but we uh, we had some child care for for our son and my face or. My wife was just like, don't worry about planning anything. I know what we're going to go do. We went to this uh, a theater in Portland, and uh, she we're going we're gonna to watch a movie called Women's King. And I had heard the movie, the title, but knew nothing about it. I knew it was, I think, up for, up for a Best Picture Oscar or whatever. But I knew nothing about the plot. And I was like, cool, I'm pumped. I'm pumped to like know nothing about a movie before I go, especially with the title, like women talking, doesn't really tell you much, does it? Um, let me give you the, the a brief, like plot synopsis, plot idea, or, you know, premise, at least not the synopsis. There is a, we'll say like a Mennonite type isolated community out, out somewhere. They never really give you a location. What did you say? Um, what, what type of isolated? Did you say Mennonite? Like, like, a, like, 
No. <laughs> yes, Meta Knight from Kirby. I was, I was uh, no. very confused. Meta Knight. You Meta know, like Knight. A, Got I, it. Yes. <laughs> you know the Church of Meta Knight? Um, <laughs> he's great. He's one of my favorite Brawl characters. Absolutely. Especially those Brawl characters. Uh, anyway, there's a Meta Knight community, isolated, very obviously traditional conservative community uh, where it is, I'll, I'll be very um, vague about this, but it is kind of simply a part of the culture there where the women are attacked. Well, to, to, say, to say it in a more vague way, attacked by the men of this culture. Um, they, they use, the, the basically, but they're never able to know who it was because they get drugged, all these things. Um, well, uh, the uh, events happen. They are able to have two full days in this community where the men are gone. And the plot of the movie is the women coming together, taking a vote. Are we going to stay and do nothing about this situation? Are we going to stay and fight the situation and try to change things? Or are we, the entirety of the women of this this culture, going to leave with whatever that might mean? They take the vote, the latter to tie, staying and fighting or leaving. So the actual plot of the movie is kind of the leadership of the women gathering together and discussing to eventually make the final decision on what they are going to do in the situation. Interesting. Yes, it's, it was fascinating, especially to go, I mean, I kind of ruined that possibility for you now if you're listening <laughs> to this, but to go into it without knowing, it's just like, oh, this is cool. This is why I want to talk about it here or just recommend it, heavily recommend it, is because it was maybe the best theological discussion about forgiveness that I have ever 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 mm -hmm. witnessed in in a movie uh there's a lot of movies that use religious iconography religious dogma religious ideas theological ideas very poorly even if they mean them in a good way you know i'm thinking of like the uh uh like the uh god's not dead movies where yeah. they're not really there to discuss a lot of stuff it's kind of got a pretty specific point to make from the very beginning and just never really anyway this is very much willing to discuss all of the possible ideas and options and concepts of forgiveness and what it means as a christian because mm -hmm. these women are not they are still interested in remaining true to their faith they are able to recognize that because this is happening it does not mean we should abandon our faith in god it means that we have to maybe change what's going on in a situation and they're also willing to say does forgiveness still have a place here, even though these crimes are horrific? Yeah. And it was super fat. You get various generations talking about it. You get various viewpoints, people having different, uh, you know, it was fascinating. And also emotionally, just obviously very riveting and just is very good. Even if you don't like the movie, I, I think it's good to watch as like a, entry into the conversation as a cultural yeah, like yeah. idea of forgiveness and uh, man it was it was great i I'll highly recommend movie. yeah nice nice yeah uh well then i, I i'll uh, stay on sort kind of a similar line here i started reading a book called gospel fluency um okay. it's a really interesting book about if we truly believe the gospel we're probably going to live our lives a little bit differently like if it's it's it, it's a really simple like theological concept that's preached on a lot sure. and this book dives into it a, a lot more deeply but uh, the whole mindset of like if we truly believe the gospel then evangelism should be significantly more important than than we are taking it to be in the american church right now yeah. you know or if we really truly believe the gospel then we should be treating people a lot different you know people who who disagree with us or you know whatever else and so it is a very good, I will say it's not new to me, the information that's being uh, sure. given to me. It's uh, it's not written by Max Lucado. I can't remember the author's name. I apologize for that. But uh, it's very similar to a Max Lucado book for me where it's nothing new, but it's a wonderful, needed refresher and yeah. an enjoyable read. So I think I'm about 
five chapters into it right now, five or six chapters into it. And uh, it, it, it's really enjoyable. I'm actually listening to it. So it's a really easy listen, one that I'm able to put mm. on while I'm doing other things. And uh, the, I, love, I always love it when the author is the one who uh, does their own audiobooks. And this is that. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. 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 And so this is that case. And it's just, it's a really good book to listen to, Gospel Fluency. Uh, yeah, I recommend it. Cool. Now, in the actually, you know, quote unquote, nerdy realm, uh, I finished, I talked about it last time, The Goblin Emperor, uh, which I was talking about. It's, it's essentially, I've heard this term now, a fantasy of manners. Where Interesting. It is essentially a court, a, like a, a, a court drama. Like, you know, it's about a emperor and dealing with the political pressures and figuring out how it works and all that. But also, like, But it is also set in a world that is goblins and elves and there is right magic exists it's not huge it's interesting and i really have come to understand or believe that the only reason why it's goblins and elves and other things like that is so that you don't have preconceived notions about what this society should be like because if, if you want to do historical fiction about queen so-and-so from year so-and-so then you're even if you're not really into that, you're going to have this idea of oh, this would be embarrassing in this courtroom, or this would be the correct response to that question. But if it's goblins and elves in a whole wholly made up war realm, even if it's the same as what would happen in Queen Elizabeth's court or whatever, right. you you can't expect that from the start. So it was nice. It felt nice to like have that. It was an interesting kind of like clash or mix of genres um well i finished that it was very good i highly recommend it i'm now on the it's not a sequel it's a side it's a story about a character from the first book Mm -hmm. um and this one is essentially a like detective drama like detective kind of thing nice uh where a character is trying to figure out what happened like a, a, a a person was murdered and they're trying to figure out what happened, but it's also set in this society where things are different. It's the same realm, same world. Uh, and so once again, I don't have a preconceived idea. I, you know, there are some things that I can kind of expect now that I've read a little bit about this world, but it still gives me that like, Oh, I'm not sure, you know, what is going to happen here? Who, what would, you know, if they were to say that to somebody, then how would that be taken? How would that, right. how would they respond? It's really nice to have because the world of fantasy can get pretty stale sometimes uh, where it's, you know, goblins and elves and dwarves and, 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 you know, dragons and all that. Yeah. And to like, it just lends to either leads to kind of a lack of diversity in genre. I think sometimes it's typically a, violence-based quest of some sort and this is about a a very kind of melancholy priest trying to genuinely figure out what happened to this lady in order to properly bury her in her own in the right religious uh fashion like it's a very different and it it just feels like it it's hard to say it's a fantasy novel right but it technically is (laughs) man that's super cool. It's familiar, uh, similar in a way to I'm reading uh, about to finish. I've already talked about it, so I won't go too deep into it. But uh, Shadow of Kyoshi, the second book in the Kyoshi uh, books from Avatar: sure. the Airbender World, and uh, in this book, it heavily takes place uh, in the Fire Nation, which is like deeply, deeply steeped in tradition and uh, yeah. manners and order and whatnot. And Kyoshi was a, an orphan who grew up on the streets. So not only is she unfamiliar with manners in general, she's never been to the fire nation. So she's entirely unfamiliar with fire nation tradition and whatnot. And so she, sure. she messes things up to a massive, massive extent. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, uh, interesting concept that I actually enjoy reading about. Um, so, uh, vid- two, two video games, one that I'm just going to mention real briefly, uh, cause I talked about it last week, uh, Hogwarts legacy, uh, nitpicks. I have to nitpick a couple of things here. The game's wonderful. I'm loving playing it. It's so, so fun. Uh, we talked about my first nitpick a little bit last night, Fox, where one of the nitpicks is that there is a war going on uh, it, during all of this. And in this war, uh, you are, for some reason, we don't know why, at least where I'm at the game, I don't know why yet, you're being hunted by uh, both goblins and 
you know, humans that have sided with the goblins. And you will kill these goblins and humans that are after you. You will straight kill up, them. Straight up kill. In their lives. And, and though it's never really addressed. There's no point where you have to deal with the fact that you just killed a man. There's no point where you have to, like, <laughs> have a conversation about the ramifications of your actions. Uh, and, and even to more kind of remove this consequences, uh, I, I went to a class and they're like, hey, I want to teach you a spell, but I want to make sure that you're ready to learn it. So go do this side quest and that'll show me that you're ready to learn the spell. And it was like, you know, dodge an attack five times. Use the the uh, Accio spell to pull an enemy closer to you ten times, whatever. And so I ran out and I killed people. And then I went back to <laughs> class and she was like, Good job. You did it. Let's teach you the next spell. And it's just, <laughs> it's such a surreal thing. Like it, it definitely takes me out of the fiction. hundred percent takes me out of the fiction. Second it, of all. Yeah. It, yeah. Second of all, you don't sleep. You don't sleep in this game at all. You have a common room. Every single, uh, every single house has their own unique common room. The only time that you go in there is if you, uh, if you do a main quest, when the main quest ends, it'll fade to black. And then when it fades back in, you'll be in your common room and you'll leave your common room. But other than mm. that, there is a day night cycle. Uh, if you're out in the world and you want to go shopping, but the shops are closed, there'll be a little shining circle that you walk into and it says, wait, and it's just gotten me and you do. And then you wait and then you stand up and everybody's, uh, you just know, stand there. there. Oh, in the middle of the road. And it's just maybe like, this is my phrase. Now I don't sleep. I wait. And that's it. I wait. <laughs> and that's it. legitimately, you don't sleep, you wait in this game. So that's my quick, you know, one minute nitpick of a really fun game, Hogwarts Legacy. But sure, the sure. game that I do want to talk about is Ali Ali World. I played Ali Ali World for the first time uh, this past week, and it's a free game on PlayStation Plus right now. Uh, if you've never played it before, it is a side scrolling skateboarding game where you are yeah. doing skateboarding tricks with just the uh, two joysticks, just your, yeah. your your left and right stick. Like like the like the skate series, yeah. Yeah, like the skate series. And uh, and it's, it's this like really cute uh, it's like you're in a world that is based on skating. There are deities, there are skate deities and whatnot. All this to say that <laughs> The game is cute and fun, and your goal is to get to Narvana, G N A R V A N A, Narvana. Oh, that's so good. Can and you I, play this? I love it. There's a lot of great puns like that, and overall, the game is fine. It's like it's okay, you know. It's not one that stuck with me at all. I, I know that I was up for all these awards, and people loved it. They really loved it, but to me, the actual loop of the game is one that got uh, a little old to me pretty quickly. Uh, I played mm. for about an hour, and I felt. I got the fullness. I'm sure I didn't. I'm sure there was more. I'm sure if I'd have kept playing, more would have been added, but I didn't feel the incentive to keep playing. And so yeah. uh, that is, uh, I do admit though, this is one of those games where I am not going to say it's because it's not a great game. Uh, it is very much your personal preference thing. This is one sure, that yeah. for me, this was not my preference of a loop of game. And so it just didn't stick with me. It's not one that I'll go back to, but uh, it is really cute. It is worth playing that hour. Absolutely worth playing that hour just to get all of the skate puns and whatnot. So yeah, Ollie Ollie World. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm still just playing Hades uh, and I'm <laughs> very close to platinum yet. In fact, I will probably get the platinum trophy today, uh, but it's a very good game. And I'm looking for, but also I'm looking forward to playing something new. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, lastly, for me, uh, Fox. Again, I told you earlier that I tried to watch Bloodsport, uh, the '80s Jean Claude Van Damme movie, because it's on HBO Max, and I loved it when I was a teenager. Like, loved, loved this movie when I was a teenager. <laughs> and uh, huge fan of the Bloodsport. I watched it, and it was so, so bad. Chat. If you, again, if you like, if you like Bloodborne, that's okay. This is not a personal preference thing. This was a bad. You said movie. Bloodborne just now. Oh, not Bloodborne. Sorry, Bloodborne's incredible. Blood Sport. <laughs> uh, Blood Sport. Yes, Blood Sport. Uh, if you like Blood Sport, that's fine. 
it's okay to like bad movies. I like the Resident Evil films a lot. They're bad movies. That's okay. I, but yeah. I love them. I love Fox likes the uh, Fast and the Furious movies. They're not great films, but he loves them. No, no, no. We're talking about, we're talking about bad movies. Yeah, exactly. Not, so- not incredible pieces of war of art <laughs> that should be in the Library of Congress. <laughs> uh that's fine so but i blood sport i couldn't finish it i watched until the final fight ended and then the moment the last fight ended i turned it off but all that to say that there was one scene in it where you know blood sports jean-claude van damme's friend uh is in the hospital and they're talking to him and there's a doctor and the doctor has a stethoscope and he sets it here and then moves it here and then he moves it here and then he moves it here and he does this for the entire like seven minute scene. Hey, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just thinking to myself, the heart. I'm just thinking to myself, like the, this, this dude saying like, where is this man's heart? I don't hear oh, anything. No. Oh, I got to find this. Or who is this guy? Like, he's just like constantly he moving it around. He should, he should have like realized and then like put the things in his ears. <laughs> like, oh. oh, all this to say that that got me thinking. I need to watch MST3K, Mystery of Science Theater 3000. Sure. So I watched uh, Avalanche, the Mystery of Science Theater, uh, Theater 3000. If you don't know what that is, by the way, it just takes old bad movies. And then there are three people, two robots and a guy, but it's basically three comedians who just have pre-written these jokes, but it seems like off the cuff while they're watching the film. Yeah, it's just make fun of it as they watch it. And yeah. they just mock it while they watch it. And oh my gosh, I was rolling. Dude, it, it was one of those things that by the end of it, like my jaw hurt from laughing and like <laughs> my eyes felt like uh puffy because I had been wiping tears away so much. I just I love MST 3K is my humor to the core of my humor. Mm. And oh man, it was beautiful and wonderful and I'm probably gonna watch more tonight. Okay. Yeah, that's all I got. Same. Well, uh, then we just want to say a big thank you to every single one of you who have been here with us uh, listening. Uh, we appreciate you guys uh, and that, that you're here with us. Hey, we also want to say, though, that uh, just once we're done podcasting here, we're going to be chatting with our stream chat, uh, kind of going back to their questions and having a conversation with them. So if you ever want to jump in, it's every other Wednesday at 9 30 a.m we are podcasting uh here on twitch.tv slash save point min we would love to have you guys here to come and uh, have a conversation with us so chat stick around for the rest of you guys thank you so much for being here we want to say a big thank you to uh to great thank you why did that blank on that I want to say a big thank you to- a Henry based game and, and i can't remember, remember granger Hey, Grangers are there. She's the first witch. She's not a family. They don't use the name at all. There are Weasleys and there are Blacks and like there are, you know, but no, no Grangers. Anyway, big thank you to Granger uh, for the use of our theme song. All my friends have Wi-Fi and so do most of my neighbors off of the album. Dear Sam, go check out Granger. They are very good. Yeah. Uh, hey, also support a save, uh, save point. Uh, Steve's Steve's online ministry on Twitch. Uh, uh, mostly selfishly motivated here if you support him financially then we can keep doing the uh the podcast here and be able to host it on on online and have it on spotify and things like that otherwise you'll never get to hear our perfect opinions on everything and never learn what you're supposed to think so think about what you'll lose if you don't support (laughs) He is, is right, though. If you, if you guys want to help us so we can syndicate the podcast and not just have it on YouTube afterward, uh, supporting Save Point would really help that. And you can even like specify, I'm supporting for the Nerdy Gritty, and we'll make sure that that money goes to the Nerdy, nerdy Gritty. So, Okay. Well, again, thank you guys so much. Uh, we appreciate that you're here. And always remember that save games, save lives. Uh, thanks for listening and watching, I guess. I like that you added I guess at the end there. Thanks for watching, I guess. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Okay. We're done. I'm I'm done. I'm out on uh my podcast Same. here. Yep. All right. I'm gonna start uh, some chill music in the background, some lo-fi hip hop beats. Uh and I'm gonna say chat. We're back. We're here with you guys. Sorry for the ignoring here. Let me scroll back and see some of the questions that we got here. Um, let's see. Uh, Cricket Alligator. 
uh, Congress needs to stop playing these violent nuclear arms race games. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's not a fun Don't game. You know, it makes them more violent. That's not that's not a game that anybody can win. That's that's a game that loses. So but, what, what? no, but what if I have more nukes? Don't I win then? <laughs> no, nobody wins. That that is the weird I'm thing. To I'm trying to speed run the end of humanity. That's the weird thing, and that again, I'm not a politician in any way, or a, a, a war general, or whatever else. So I, I this is an honest. <laughs> like, I don't what? know. I, this is an honest. I don't know. But uh, well, I say war general because there's like a surgeon general, and there's like there's different. And you are one of those. I am. So <laughs> I guess that's right. I'm not a general of everything. I'm generally ignorant is all that it is. But <laughs> I'm a. If anything, I'm a taller general. And that's about it. <laughs> I'm the general insurance icon. That's it. <laughs> that's the worst one. That's the worst one. Anyway, uh, once you have enough nukes to destroy the planet, why yeah. do you need more? After that, it's just a, just a status thing, I guess. Huh? <laughs> and over here is my illustrator Pikachu. And over here are all of my nuclear weapons. Are my 8,000 <laughs> nuclear weapons. Okay. Here's the thing, though. You think about it. Look, think about it. Earth is, let's just say, Earth is X size. X number of population, X number of physical land area. Mars, way bigger. What if the Martians reveal themselves? We have to destroy them. <laughs> if all we have is Earth number of Earth, you know, the Earth area of, of weapons, then we are not ready. So check me. Fair, fair. Although I'm pretty sure we have enough to destroy Earth, Mars, Jupiter, yeah, Saturn, solar system the is Sun. Just gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fubudu says, if it violates the TOS, does that make it okay for the company to release this stuff? Uh, it definitely did sway my opinion. We we talked on that. We touched on that. Uh, it, that definitely swayed my opinion a bit. If it's in the TOS, or if there is some sort of like very clear, hey, this is what's gonna happen. I, I, I would think that makes it more okay. I'm still on the fence with it in general, but overall, I, I think that that helps me. Uh, you know, that definitely would make it better for me. <laughs> right. Phys literally, you should word it as, uh, would you like us to display your username publicly if you're found cheating and only allow them to continue playing the game if they select yes? I, that's that's a, select, a good way to word it. Yeah. No, if you select no, then you are not allowed to play the game. Right. That's and then you are literally saying yes. I would like you to do this. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, it, it, I definitely think that changes things and being fully aware. And this is not, this is not necessarily a horrific like actual doxing. It's not saying this guy's name is Kyle Fox and his address is twenty two twenty five West Rockwell Drive, uh, Chandler, Arizona, which is my old address. Go visit a total stranger. <laughs> And yeah, it do let's dox them. It's fine. We'll dox them. It's a random. I don't know gift. who they are, so it's okay if I dox them. Man, did you hear a while back there was uh, two guys who got in an online fight, and one guy's like, "I'm gonna go to your house and kill you." The guy says, "Do it. I don't care." Uh, no, I really am gonna do it. Fine. Here's my address. And the guy went to the address and shot somebody in there, and the guy had lied. It was not his address, and it was a total rando. I yeah. Cool. And that's see cool. that's the garbage I'm talking about. That that kind of cool stuff. Cool society. Yeah, cool society. We did it. Good job, cool, gaming cool culture. culture. That's the kind of stuff that makes me think that this is uh, a little rough. Also yeah. a little rough, yeah. you know. So, yeah. Anyway, Fox, you have any last final thoughts before we sign off for the day? Don't don't cheat on video games. Don't do a cheat chat. You heard it here first. Don't Unlo cheat. Unless you really want to win. <laughs> unless you really want to win. Don't cheat. But you got to really want it. Hey, must be a League of Legends player. Yeah. <laughs> That's we, we, we mentioned that in the podcast. I don't know if you were there for that Fubudu, but uh, we said that from in Escape from Tarkov, if you do, if you like dock somebody's username, chances are maybe things will get rough maybe think if it's league of legends you can't like riot games could not do that they could not do the same thing right. because them them folks they'll, they'll get real man they'll get it's real still, yeah it's a much bigger world and a much yeah. more like infamous for its toxicity realm 
Yeah. So, sure. well, chat. Fox needs to get out of here. He's got to go drive a school a, a school bus and. Uh, no, I've, I've, I've got to go grocery shopping. Oh, he's got to go uh, shop for the groceries. So uh, thank yep. you guys for hanging out with us here. For all of you who are in the chat, it's been fun chatting with you guys uh, for your jokes and your comments and your thoughts and whatever else. Um, uh, contents idea. I teach you and Fox how to play League, and we have a great time. No. Bye. <laughs> You know, mine wasn't that blatant. And oh, he just hung up. He's gone. Goodbye. And look, now I'm mirrored. Bye, Fox. He's... <laughs> that was my favorite thing that has ever happened on stream. I also didn't realize that I would be mirrored like this. So uh, you guys actually get to see here that I use two cameras uh, because OBS gets mad when you try and use one camera more than once. And so this is my streaming camera. And this is my... Uh, this is my chatting camera and you can see they're definitely different qualities except this one won't stop being blurry and i don't know why and it's driving me nuts anyway chat thank you so much for being here uh we love that each and every one of you were in the chat with us today but always remember that there's a church out there that would love it if you were there with them thanks again guys we will see you next time we may try and raid somebody here I i've been trying to raid for a while and figuring out how that works but uh all i'd say we love you guys we'll see you later bye